Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. And we're going to look at an India crypto alert. Trading volume in India is up by 47% on this specific exchange. And they've been adding new users. Uh, the volume is up by over a thousand percent of new users. So ever since the Supreme Court in India had overturned the bank regulations or the regulations that the banks and the Central Bank of India had imposed upon the cryptocurrency industry, um, there has been a flood of interest in India about cryptocurrency. And you want to stop and pause for a moment. India has one point four billion people. Think about that. 1.4 billion. All right, so actually it's 1.38 something something something. But anyway, it's very very close to 1.4 billion people. It's one of the largest countries in terms of population on the planet. So what happens when 1.4 billion people get involved with cryptocurrency? Does that make the price go down or will it force the price up higher? It'll force the price up higher because there's not enough cryptocurrency to go around. You know, there's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin. <clears throat> and to share 21 million Bitcoin with 1.4 billion people, uh, you're talking about lots of people getting fractions of a single Bitcoin. And as those people invest and purchase fractions of a Bitcoin, that just naturally drives the price up. Now, how long will it take? When will we actually see a large portion of those people owning Bitcoin? Time will tell. But at the moment, we do know this, that there are over 440 million smartphones in India today and that those phones are compatible with the different exchanges that are going live in India. And so we know that the initial market out there in India is about 441 million people. And so this uh, is a crypto alert because it's big news. <coughs> Excuse me. In other news, in, and also in today's video, Anthony Pompliano, and if you don't know Anthony Pompliano, he has been uh, a speaker and an advocate and a teacher of cryptocurrency uh, for a lot of years. And if you go to any kind of a cryptocurrency conference, Oftentimes, Anthony Pompliano will be one of the featured speakers at many cryptocurrency conferences around the world. So, the, and, and Anthony has recently said and stated that the crypto tide is turning for institutional investors. And then Bequant is a company and they launched a crypto prime brokerage to compete for institutional money. And so they basically launched a cryptocurrency exchange that is designed specifically for brokerages, for hedge funds, and will allow them to do high-speed trading in cryptocurrency. So this is a fascinating one. And then finally, we're going to talk about India Crypto Alert trading volume up by 47% and new users up by 1,000%. So that'll be the, the topic that we'll finish this video with. Uh, stay to the very end because we have a great video planned for you. Now, should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? Our videos are designed to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get 99 likes on this video? Smash the like button. It really helps us out. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And so anytime you're investing in cryptocurrency, you're taking a substantial risk of loss. Be sure to read this disclaimer and take, please take it seriously. Um, it's important that you invest wisely when you do invest in anything, but especially cryptocurrency. Now, right now is 7.07 Central Standard Time on May 15th, 2020. And Bitcoin is hovering right around $9,570. A few hours ago, 
Bitcoin attempted to break the $10,000 price barrier or the $10,000 resistance level. Um, and it was pushed back down from that level. And right now it's residing right around 9,500, which is about a 0.5% loss. And then you can see that the rest of the cryptocurrency market is a smattering of reds and greens. Some of them are down, some of them are up, but most of them are not showing dramatic changes. Most of them are showing very small changes in the last 24 hours, at least at this moment. If you're familiar with cryptocurrency, that could change in the next 20 minutes and it could be a very dramatic change. So I thought this video or this image was kind of interesting with the guy in, uh, this almost looks like a space suit, but the tank on the back here doesn't remind me of any kind of space suit I've ever seen, but that does look like a space suit with Bitcoin in the sky and he's in the water. I, I'm not sure I understand the, the meaning or the, the, you know, like what's behind this image? Like what's the purpose of the image? Thought it was interesting though, kind of looks cool. Anthony Popoliano, crypto tide is turning for institutional investors. Bitcoin burst to $100,000 is likely, according to Anthony Popoliano. So Morgan Creek Digital co-founder Anthony Popoliano says Bitcoin's status among traditional investors is starting to change. In an interview with Yahoo Finance, Popoliano says the longer Bitcoin continues to thrive and prove naysayers, predicting its demise wrong, the more people will take notice of its remarkable rise in value over the last decade. He points to the fact that JP Morgan is now providing banking services to crypto exchanges Coinbase and Gemini as a sign of what's to come. Bitcoin is not going away, and this is a quote from Anthony Popliano. Bitcoin is not going away. You are starting to see a lot of Wall Street investors actually putting it in their portfolios. And they're also starting to have some track record for these exchanges or businesses so they can see the financial performance. So I think ultimately you're going to start to see uh, is banks can't ignore the cryptocurrency space. Pompliano uh, continues and says about a year ago it started to be a thing like, oh, that hasn't died yet. Maybe I should do some more work and get educated on it. Now what we're starting to see is two separate groups of people. Some that have done the work and are now getting, gaining exposure. They're investing in cryptocurrency. So you see some like Paul Tudor Jones come in and say he's got 1% to 2% of his portfolio in crypto and he's worried about inflation giving all the money printing going on. So when I first heard that Paul Tudor Jones was investing 1% to 2% of his portfolio into crypto, it didn't mean a whole lot. But the more I learn about Paul Tudor Jones and the more I learn about people's reaction to that, the more I've understood that Paul Tudor Jones is a legendary investor and that people pay attention to what he has to say. And when he does something like takes 1% to 2% of his portfolio, and puts it into cryptocurrency. It's kind of like that old commercial where um, somebody was, I'm trying to remember what, what I, I just thought of this as I was speaking. And so I don't remember the company's name, but every time somebody said, oh, and I got this advice from my investment company, the entire restaurant would go silent. Or if they were somewhere at a ball game, uh, 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 watching a sporting event, so maybe basketball or baseball or something else, and the crowd was noisy, they would say, oh, and I got this advice from my invest investment company, such and such. Everybody would suddenly be quiet because they wanted to hear what that investment company was advising. Well, Paul Tudor Jones has, I've, at least from what I've seen, it looks like he's having a similar in effect on the people who are investment gurus, the people who are uh, highly into trading stocks and bonds and other investment assets. And all of a sudden, his word is catching a whole lot of interest. And the fact that he's put one to 2% of his portfolio is already in crypto is, is kind of getting people to wake up and go, oh wait, if he's done that, maybe I need to think more about doing that. So, and then Anthony went on to say, in the second bucket, 
what you've got is a lot of institutional investors that are sitting there saying, look, I'm just doing asset allocation and this asset is very unique in that it's over a long period of time has a non-correlation to other assets. It's able to improve my sharp ratio and can actually drive on a risk award standpoint, a significant increase in my performance by only allocating a small amount of capital to it. So his point is, Anthony's point is, is that some people are getting into cryptocurrency as institutional or people who are whales, large investors. They're doing it because they're concerned about inflation and others are concerned about balancing their portfolio um, and improving its performance. So kind of an interesting thing, and it's interesting that there is forming two different camps and that COVID is the driver for one of them. Now, Bequant launches crypto prime brokerage to compete for institutional money. So digital asset services firm Bequant launched a prime brokerage service for institutional clients to have access to liquidity, custody, lending, and other products the company announced on Thursday. So this is very interesting that we actually all of a sudden have a cryptocurrency exchange uh, that's designed for institutions and for high volume trading, high speed trading. With several services and pools of liquidity under one roof, Bequant is able to help institutional clients trade and expand their portfolios while keeping transaction costs low. Additional services include collateral management tools, smart order routing, leveraged trade execution, and over-the-counter block trading. We are tailored to a lot of quant or hedge funds, and our clients typically look at trading through automated strategies, arbitrage, you name it. So that's where I was referencing the high volume trading, high, high, uh, high speed trading, is because these guys are, a, a quant is someone who's using a computer software in order to trade crypto, or in order to trade an assets such as stocks and bonds. And most hedge funds today use uh, computer programs to do all of their trading, getting in and out of different stocks. They'll buy IBM and then they'll sell IBM stock based off of what the computer program tells them to do. In fact, they don't even really touch it other than to monitor the performance of the computer program. The computer program is actually doing the actual trades, so it's buying and selling. But Quant is connected to 18 different sources. Now, I found this very interesting. The exchange is connected to 18 different sources of liquidity, including seven crypto exchanges, and plans to have 30 sources of liquidity by the end of 2020. And so they're connecting this uh, uh, brokerage firm up to a whole bunch of different places where they could buy, sell, and trade crypto. Um, and some of those are crypto exchanges. So I, wish, I would love to learn more about what are... So if only seven are crypto exchanges, then what was the other 11 and what kind of firms, what kind of businesses are they that allows them to buy and sell crypto through those sources? And when they're talking about getting up to 30 by the end of 2020, I'm curious as to the other entities, the other businesses that they're going to be connecting this brokerage firm up to. So the process of onboarding a new liquidity provider, which means using exchange APIs, and an exchange API is simply a way for a program to talk to that exchange and say, okay, uh, we're going to buy this much, we're going to sell that much, we're going to buy you know, 10,000 uh, uh, 10, Ethereum, we want to sell 1,000 Bitcoin, we want to you know, buy this crypto and sell that crypto, etc. And so an API is a way that a program can do that in an automatic fashion and sharing commission schedules. So the uh, API also pulls down the commission schedule as well as the current prices and a lot of other information so that the, the brokerage firm, Bequant, can handle its business and provide this liquidity source to its customers. And it says here that it takes around two to six months for them to add a new liquidity pri uh, provider. 
And so the two to six months has to do with uh, building the software so that they can speak to that exchange's API or that business's API. And an API is um, simply a, a, it's, an API is a way to expose one program to another program so that the two programs can interact with each other. And so in this case, we have one crypto exchange talking to another crypto exchange. And when they're talking, they're doing things like, okay, how much is the price of Bitcoin right now? Okay, how many people are trying to sell Bitcoin at that price? How many, show me your, your current order book. Um, I want to buy 10,000 units of Bitcoin. I want to sell 1,000 units of, of Ethereum, and et cetera, et cetera. And so the API is, uh, <clears throat> it's the programming standards that that particular company is using so that other programs can go in and interact with it. And so it's all part of how uh, one computer system talks to another computer system is what an API is all about. So it's imp important to know that centralized servicing is really important to institutional players, said Alex Muscali, head of institutional services of Bacant. We're becoming a one-stop shop for these places to consolidate their fragmented market right now. And so basically when he's talking about centralized, he's basically saying, you know, we want to be a one-stop shop for these institutions to come in and buy, be able to buy, sell, trade cryptocurrency. And we're building an infrastructure with 30 different sources of liquidity, 30 different exchanges and similar businesses that they can purchase and sell cryptocurrency with and through. So quite interesting what they're building there. Now, the last article that we wanted to cover today is about India and about their largest crypto exchange, which is an exchange called BitGo. So BitGo is now providing its custody service. I'm sorry, I got that mixed up. BitGo is a, is a company that custodies cryptocurrency. CoinDCX is an exchange, and CoinDCX is the largest exchange in India. So I had those confused for a moment, but we got it clarified. CoinDCX has taken yet another stride in consolidating our position as a trusted and secure brand. With the custodial services of BitGo, we want to make cryptocurrency utilization in India safe and secure. Samit Gupta, CEO and co-founder of CoinDCX, said in the announcement. So here's what I wrote the title about, and it's off of this, this uh, paragraph right here. Alongside a recent Supreme Court order overturning the central bank's ban on banking services for crypto firms, CoinDCX said it saw an increase in trading volume of up to 47% in the first quarter of 2020. So that increase is dramatic for a whole quarter. While user signups were up tenfold, tenfold amounts to 1,000%. So they're seeing a 1,000% increase in new users, and that just goes to show the kind of interest that people have in India and how that interest is growing exponentially um, at this time. While local crypto industry now open again, investors and major exchanges have been eyeing moves into India. Billionaire venture capitalist Tim Draper said India was now entering a crypto renaissance and that he was seeking suitable investments in the nation. So Tim Draper is one of these guys that buys and sells businesses. Um, and he, he, he and his family have been what's called venture capitalists. And so they provide small businesses money to become large businesses. And because of those investments, he and his family for the last three generations have done extremely well financially because they've been able to pick a lot of winners. And by picking winners and investing in them, they ended up making a lot of money as a result. And so he's getting very interested in the cryptocurrency industry in India. And trading platforms such as Binance and Kraken have both indicated that they would expand into the potentially huge market. Huge as in 1.38 billion people. Binance and its local exchange subsidy war Warizx launched a $50 million blockchain fund 
to boost local startups less than two weeks after the Supreme Court decision. This Supreme Court decision was uh, instrumental to opening up India into the cryptocurrency market. So with the recent uptick in trading volumes on Indian exchanges, the need of the hour is for professionalization in the form of fund security in the crypto market, said Peter Najran, chief revenue officer of BitGo. As the custodian of Coindex, BitGo will provide their users with added value and assurance when investing in cryptocurrency. And so all of this is huge news for not only India and the cryptocurrency businesses in India, but also the cryptocurrency industry as a whole. Um, because you know, you're talking about a huge portion of the people around the world. So in conclusion, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions that I could help you with? Uh, is there anything that you wanna talk about? Please leave your comments in the comment section below on the YouTube channel. I would love to hear from you, even if you disagree with me, because hey, look, you know things I don't know, I know things you don't know, and when we share what we know together, we'll grow smarter together. I wanna grow smarter together with you, so I hope you'll take the time and share your thoughts and comments in the section below, especially your polite disagreements. So, uh, in the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl, and do me a favor, have a fantastic day.